April 14, 1721 to November 15, 1783 was a merchant and public official from Maryland during the era of the American Revolution. In 1779, Hansen was elected as a delegate to the Continental Congress after serving in a variety of roles for the Patriot cause in Maryland. He signed the Articles of Confederation in 1781 after Maryland finally joined the other states in ratifying them. In November 1781, he was elected as first President of the Confederation Congress, sometimes styled President of the United States in Congress assembled, following ratification of the Articles. For this reason, some of Hansen's biographers have argued that he was actually the first holder of the office of President of the United States. John Hansen was born in Port Tobacco Parish in Charles County, in the province of Maryland on April 14, 1721. Sources published prior to a 1940 genealogical study. Sometimes listed his birth date as April 13, or his year birth as 1715. Hansen was born on a plantation called Mulberry Grove into a wealthy and prominent family. His parents were Samuel, 1685-1740, and Elizabeth, Story, Hansen, 1688-1764. Samuel Hansen was a planter who owned more than 1,000 acres, 4.0 kilometers, and held a variety of political offices, including serving two terms in the Maryland General Assembly. John Hansen's grandfather, also named John, came to Charles County, Maryland, as an indentured servant around 1661. In 1876, a writer named George Hansen placed John Hansen in his family tree of Swedish Americans descended from four Swedish brothers who emigrated to New Sweden in 1642. This story was often repeated over the next century but scholarly research in the late 20th century showed that John Hansen was not related to those Swedish-American Hansens. Little is known about Hansen's early life. He was presumably privately tutored as was customary among the wealthy of his time and place. He followed his father's path as a planter, slave owner, and public official. He was often referred to as John Hansen, Jr., to distinguish him from an older man of the same name. Hansen's career in public service began in 1750, when he was appointed sheriff of Charles County. In 1757, he was elected to represent Charles County in the lower house of the Maryland General Assembly where he served over the next 12 years, sitting on many important committees. Maryland was a proprietary colony and Hansen aligned himself with the popular or country party, which opposed any expansion of the power of the proprietary governors at the expense of the popularly elected lower house. He was a leading opponent of the 1765 Stamp Act, chairing the committee that drafted the instructions for Maryland's delegates to the Stamp Act Congress. In protest of the Townsend Acts, in 1769, Hansen was one of the signers of a non-importation resolution that boycotted British imports until the acts were repealed. Hansen changed course in 1769, apparently to better pursue his business interests he resigned from the General Assembly, sold his land in Charles County, and moved to Frederick County, in western Maryland. There he held a variety of offices, including deputy surveyor, sheriff, and county treasurer. When relations between Great Britain and the colonies became a crisis in 1774, Hansen became one of Frederick County's leading patriots. He chaired a town meeting that passed a resolution opposing the Boston Port Act. In 1775, he was, a delegate to the Maryland Convention an extra-legal body convened after the Colonial Assembly had been prorogued. With the other delegates, he signed the Association of Freemen on July 26, 1775, which expressed hope for reconciliation with Great Britain, but also called for military resistance to the enforcement of the coercive acts. With hostilities underway, Hansen chaired the Frederick County Committee of Observation, part of the Patriot organization that assumed control of local governance. Responsible for recruiting and arming soldiers, Hansen proved to be an excellent organizer, and Frederick County sent the first Southern troops to join George Washington's army. 
because funds were scarce. Hansen frequently paid soldiers and others with his own money. In June 1776, Hansen chaired the Frederick County meeting that urged provincial leaders in Annapolis to instruct Maryland's delegates in the Continental Congress to declare independence from Great Britain. While Congress worked on the Declaration of Independence, Hansen was in Frederick County making gunlocks, storing powder, guarding prisoners, raising money and troops, dealing with Tories, and doing the myriad other tasks which went with being chairman of the Committee of Observation. Hansen was elected to the newly reformed Maryland House of Delegates in 1777, the first of five annual terms. In December 1779, the House of Delegate to the Second Continental Congress, he began serving in Congress in Philadelphia in June 1780. Hansen came to Philadelphia with the reputation of having been the leading financier of the revolution in Western Maryland, and soon he was a member of several committees dealing with finance. When Hansen was elected to Congress, Maryland was holding up the ratification of the Articles of Confederation. The state, which did not have any claims on Western land, refused to ratify the Articles until the other states had ceded their Western land claims. When the other states finally did so, the Maryland legislature decided in January 1781, to ratify the Articles. When Congress received notice of this, Hansen joined Daniel Carroll in signing the Articles of Confederation on behalf of Maryland on March 1, 1781. With Maryland's endorsement, the Articles officially went into effect. Many years later, some Hansen biographers claimed that Hansen had been instrumental in arranging the compromise and thus, securing ratification of the Articles, but, according to historian Ralph Levering, there is no documentary evidence of Hansen's opinions or actions in resolving the controversy. On November 5, 1781, Congress elected Hansen as its president. Under the Articles of Confederation, the United States had no executive branch, the President of Congress was a mostly ceremonial position, but the office did require Hansen to serve as neutral discussion moderator, handle official correspondence, and sign documents. Hansen found the work tedious and considered resigning after just one week, citing his poor health and family responsibilities. Colleagues urged him to remain because Congress at that moment lacked a quorum to choose a successor. Out of a sense of duty, Hansen remained in office, although his term as a delegate to Congress was nearly expired. The Maryland Assembly re-elected him as a delegate on November 28, 1781, and so Hansen continued to serve as president until November 4, 1782. The Articles of Confederation stipulated that presidents of Congress serve one-year terms, and Hansen became the first to do so. Contrary to the claims of some of his later advocates. However, he was not the first president to serve under the Articles, nor the first to be elected under the Articles. When the Articles went into effect in March 1781, Congress did not bother to elect a new president. Instead, Samuel Huntington continued serving a term that had already exceeded a year. On July 9, 1781, Samuel Johnston became the first man to be elected as President of Congress after the ratification of the Articles. He declined the office. However, perhaps to make himself available for North Carolina's gubernatorial election after Johnston turned down the office, Thomas McKean was elected. McKean served just a few months. Resigning in October 1781 after hearing news of the British surrender at Yorktown. Congress asked him to remain in office until November, when a new session of Congress was scheduled to begin. It was in that session that Hansen began to serve his one-year term. A highlight of Hansen's term was when George Washington presented Cornwallis's sword to Congress. Hansen retired from public office after his one-year term as President of Congress in poor health. He died on November 15, 1783. While visiting Oxon Hill Manor in Prince George's County, Maryland, the plantation of his nephew Thomas Hawkins Hansen. He was buried there. Hansen owned at least 223 acres of land and slaves at the time of his death. About 1744, 
He married Jane Conti, 1728-1812, daughter of Alexander Conti, 1692-1740. Together, John and Jane had eight children, including Jane Conti Hansen, 1747-1781, who married Philip Thomas, 1747-1815, Peter Conti Hansen, 1748-1776, who died in the Battle of Fort Washington during the American Revolutionary War. For his service during the war, Lieutenant Hansen became eligible for representation by a living descendant in the Society of the Cincinnati in the state of Maryland. Alexander Conti Hansen Sr., 1749-1806, who was a notable essayist. Alexander Hansen is sometimes confused with his son, Alexander Conti Hansen Jr., 1786-1819, who became a newspaper editor and U.S. Senator. A big thank you to all of you for watching.